Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction 354. Science Faction, I call BS. Okay, let's do it. I got what I wanted last episode. I you got, Dr. Tro- I got you... Dr. Troy to lose his cool. You... I got his head. I rattled him. I mean, when you <laughs> when you claimed a victory that wasn't yours and then complained bitterly when it was discovered that you had, well, we'll say cheated uh, in order to try and win. I believe the words coming out of Donald Trump's mouth more than I believe the words coming out of yours during this I Call BS. Like, it's a very contained thing, but I yeah. know that, like, you are a very dishonest person, both uh, uh-huh. to myself knowingly uh-huh. and then unknowingly to a bunch of people you've never met in uh-huh. Radio Land. Keep, ta- keep talking, all Epstein, you. All right. <laughs> and speaking of Epstein, I, of course, am your host, comedian archaeologist Robert Timothy. With me, as always, is my comedian, Mr. Damian Mercado. Damian, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. And after I'm found dead by suicide uh-huh. in my bed, uh, the authorities will discover my picture of Bobby in a blue dress. <laughs> <laughs> it's a painting I had commissioned years ago. He knows what it means. That's right. And our scientist for the afternoon, Bill. Bill, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. That's all I have okay, today. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and for those of you guys who haven't heard before, I Call BS is a game where I read four science news articles, some of which are real, uh, some of which are BS, standing for bad science. They're all independent variables. All could be true, all could be false, any combination in between. Let's get going with I Call BS. I Call. 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 Ring, ring. I Call BS. All right, article number one. More than 11,000 birds fell dead out of the Montana sky overnight due to a mysterious Asian bird virus. Damien, is this science or bad science? You know, that's it's kind of like one of those things where, like, Bobby just kind of shows his casual racism. You know, Uh like, I was mugged by a black guy. Why why do you need to mention the guy's ethnicity? You were Uh mugged. Right. It it doesn't add to the story. It It does not at all. So why does this... Asian. Bird. It's, it's, it, it adds to the story so you understand the racial slur I yelled afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So I'm standing against it's science. Okay. I'm standing against your racism. It was not uh, some Asian bird virus that killed these, uh, it was an Asian driver. Okay. <laughs> But still science. All right, fair yeah. enough. All right. You guys are questioning how bad the driving had yeah. to be to kill a thousand fucking birds, <laughs> assuming in flight, by the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they yeah. dropped From out of Asia. the sky. Out yeah. of the sky. Well, yeah, I mean, you can you can get some air in an average Honda <laughs> Civic, right? You just got to hit the right ramp. I'm picturing like an ET thing with like a car flying past yep. the moon, except the car has like its, its hazard lights on. Yeah. <laughs> There's someone reaching out the window of the car with a baseball bat to hit extra birds. <laughs> All right, and Bill. This seems plausible, but it's also Montana. Where would this virus come from? It could be there. We do get a lot of meat and produce delivered from China. Mm -hmm. So it could have potentially come in that, I guess, maybe like an infected chicken. Sure. I'll say it was science. All right. Article number two. A new paper indicates that plants have an animal-like consciousness. Damien, is this science? Or bad science. This is bad science. Plants do not have a conscience because what would Jiminy Cricket even say to them? Oh, so so Jiminy Cricket is their conscience. Oh, conscience, consciousness, and conscience are the no, same thing. Yeah. I've, I've, mm. you, yeah, that's kind of the great thing about being brought on as like the dumb guy of the show. Yeah. I don't know any better. Oh shucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I so just now, needed to make a joke, and I didn't really find this to be a fertile premise for comedy. <laughs> that's so I had to make this trash. Well, you were clearly right on that one. <laughs> yeah. By and the way, I like how you actually uh, turned into Pinocchio for that. No, I was trying to get to Jiminy Cricket telling oh, okay. like, Hi, I'm Damien's conscience, and he didn't feel right about that joke. It, it just by coincidence, also sounds like Towelie a little bit. Yeah, it does. <laughs> he is high. <laughs> All right, and Bill. Um, okay. Can you read it again? A new paper indicates that plants have an animal-like consciousness. Animal-like consciousness. I'm going to say this is bad science. It seems very unlikely that any, like, network of cells that plants had would be like an animal conscious. Mm. Bad science. All right. Article number three. A woman has lost a significant amount of her skull around her ear due to the regular use of Q-tips. I mean, is this science or bad science? This is science, but that's misleading. You know when people go against the recommendations of the box mm-hmm. and they soak a tampon in vodka and stick it in their rectum? Is that on the box? Mm, before. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's, it's supposed to soak in tampon, stick it in your vagina, not oh, your rectum. Oh, I see. <laughs> but that leaves me out of the game. Okay. 
<laughs> you are being discriminated yeah. against, Damien. Have you thought of drinking this building? <laughs> have you thought of cutting them into like three pieces, like down the line, and then using it in your urethra in the same way? Oh God. I'm going to have the driest urethra around. That <laughs> <laughs> so brings a whole new you know, whole new meaning to the term Russian pee games. <laughs> Please pull it out slowly. Please pull it out slowly. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, You're not supposed to put Q-tips in your ear, but I think this lady uh, was soaking her Q-tips in amphetamines. I don't know. Uh, what, what makes it yeah, eat skull? Yeah, what, how, do you, how does that work? Crocodile? Is that what yeah. the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, crocodile or right. essentially gasoline and what is that, coating? Uh, yeah, and then that, that's what got it. Okay, all right. And uh, Bill? Uh, I'm going to say bad science. I think it makes a lot more sense that she would get extra bone matter mm. where she was stimulating some part of sure. her cranium. C- like, almost like... Like scar tissue or so something. So you think that the Q-tips act almost like a superhero, superpower building device where like if you stick <laughs> enough Q-tips in there, your skull responds by creating it. Or I guess almost like when guys do too much wrestling or jujitsu and their the ears, they get cauliflower yeah, yeah. ear. Yeah, I'm thinking like if you stimulate an area, like it, you're not going to remove bone with a Q-tip, but yes. you could you could potentially be pressing real hard and like your body will react by, like, I don't know, some scar tissue, maybe bone. Okay, fair enough. Article number four, at least 22 people in the Midwest had to be hospitalized due to an as-yet-unknown condition caused by vaping that left at least one of them in a medically-induced coma. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is bad science. Vaping has probably affected a lot more Mm -hmm. people than that. Sure. Uh, and, And in a lot of ways that we don't understand. But I'm also going to say it's bad science just because, on principle, I'm against vaping because whereas smoking makes you look cool, yeah, vaping just makes you look like a douche. Yeah, you're just smoking that robot dick. Goes <laughs> uh, with some cotton candy, bro? I'm puffing clouds. All right, and Bill. Uh, I'll, I'll say that this is science. I know that – so popcorn lung we know about. Right. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, popcorn lung is – a delicious. <laughs> Super dangerous condition in which th- we're not sure what's going on in their lung. It's forming these weird nodules on the inside. And it's literally worse than lung cancer because at least with lung cancer, which is pretty bad, we have enough of evidence and stuff backing it to say, okay, you have lung cancer. Here are the treatment options. Here's how we're going to go through. And people with lung cancer do survive. We are, do have treatments that work for them. We don't have any treatments for popcorn lung. We don't know what the fuck it is. To be fair, mm. the, you, the disease you're talking about is that we know about popcorn lung. Yes. You're saying an unknown. This is different. This is an unknown thing. Yeah. But I would believe that there's some other thing. That's p- potentially even worse in that it affects more people. All right. Let's go back and see how you guys did. Follow along at home and see how you did. Oh, I forgot to ask Damien. Did you want a bonus question? Why do you even bring that up? The fact that you bring it up tells me that I don't know. I've done I just, well. Like, I was, the, no, I, just, I was just asking. Did you want one? I never. Just blanket statement? Yes. I never uh-huh. want a bonus Because you have question. asked for them on numerous <laughs> occasions. No, I have never asked for them. You, I have just made the mistake the of saying the word bonus question. question. Oh, did you want one? No, you, <laughs> you just brought it up. <laughs> You just brought up a bonus question. <laughs> I do not. All right, let's sit down. You know, all right, fine, fine, fine. Well, no bonus question. That's fine. Okay. Article number one. More than 11,000 birds fell out of a Montana sky overnight due to a mysterious Asian bird virus. Both of you guys thought this one was science, and this one is bad science. Though 11,000 Montana birds did fall dead out of the sky due to hail. They had baseball-sized hail come down, flatten crops, wow. like bust up roofs, and li- and I've wondered about this before. I'm always wondering, like, what do wild animals do when it hails? <laughs> Apparently, they, they get mangled. Fuck, dude. And here's what's bad: like, you don't. We think of it as like, oh man, those poor birds that got hit by hail and died. No, most of them had like got their wings broken or something like that, and then just flopped around on the ground for 12 and a half hours before finally succumbing to like oh, a man. dog walking by them. Yeah, it was destruction and they showed pictures of this it looks it looks like something out of like the bible where like horrible things have a plague has come through and there's just all these maimed birds just lying around open fields with broken yeah. wings fluttering around on the ground wow. there's nothing you can do at that point you can't it's not like some vet can go fix 11,000 bird you know, wings in one night yeah like they're just going to die fucking crazy and then yeah. i was thinking this what if you're like Okay, so it's Montana. Things are really far apart. You go out for a run. You're two miles into a five-mile run, and it starts baseball. What the fuck do you do? Like, you're getting pelted by something that's falling at incredibly fast speeds. It's very... He- like, what the fuck do you do? You're hot under a buffalo. 
<laughs> I, I, it always seems because we don't really experience hail where we live. Occasionally we get it. It's very rare, and when we do, it's small, small. and not a big deal. I have always been curious about this for these places where this crazy shit happens because that's you got to like, pay attention to the weather report. I guess how many right? people die about from hail? I mean, yeah, think about that's that. What I was wondering, it's not just birds, right? Yeah, like, there's probably other things that got the only killed. thing that saved people is the fact that there's eight and a half people living in Montana, and one of them was on <laughs> vacation. Like that's that's the only thing that saved people. <laughs> And here's the thing. If you ever talk to somebody from Montana, like, California, how do you even live there? Right, yeah. I mean, what with your variety of cultures and food choices, and you get to know your neighbor and not hate the other. And the ocean, that looks scary. Yeah, yeah. well, that, and like, I heard there's more than two black people there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, article number two. A new... God throws softball-sized hail at you, you grab a softball bat. That's what <laughs> I was. That's my, my grandmama. <laughs> <laughs> Article number two, a new paper indicates that plants have an animal-like consciousness. Both of you guys thought this was bad science, and this one is bad science. It is the opposite. So this is something... A- animals have plant-like consciousness? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, in that they do not have animal-like okay, consciousness. Okay. So this is something that certain plant biologists and me, this guy who's ranted about this on my on this show before, have in common, which is we are both very bothered by these claims that have come out in the past decade, and they all center around a single article that was produced in uh, about a decade ago in a, a journal called Trend, Penis? No, in, in Trends in Plant Psychology, and it postulated that plants have a consciousness because it brought together a bunch of different articles we've shown recently that showed that plants, for one, can communicate. So one plant can let another plant far away know what's going on, usually by sending off different uh, you know, hormones, pheromones into the air that then get perceived by this other plant. Plants can interpret that and then change, for instance, the chemical makeup of their leaves to be less susceptible, for instance, to a caterpillar. So one plant's getting eaten by a caterpillar, it sends a message signal out to other plants, they change the chemical makeup of their leaves, and now the caterpillar is less likely to eat it. Plants, we can tell send signals across a single plant, almost like our own nerve channels through sodium ion channels or calcium channels that basically go through the plant and can send messages from one side of the plant to the other. None of this equates to consciousness. It's all really interesting. It is interesting that plants can send messages this way. However, consciousness or an actual neurology, it implies that you have a brain. Like you cannot do consciousness without a brain. You can't imagine yourself or other things or or think conscious thoughts without this. What you can do is have these type of responses, which are essentially like reflex responses. You don't need a brain or any kind of higher level thinking to do it. But what happened is you had a bunch of people get together and they they said, look, we can see that they can send signals, right? And what is consciousness but a bunch of signals back, bouncing back and forth? And if these plants have enough networks between themselves, then they essentially create a neural network and then they can send complex messages. That is just not how this works. And so these paper, people actually dissected that paper bit by bit and showed what the evidence could do and showed the limits of that evidence and how you could never come to anything like even like a neode worm, neonate worm that has like 300 neurons. We've mapped every single one. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Um, even that is so far above the most complex plant system you could ever imagine that there is no consciousness. There's nothing that would resemble a brain or neurology. It's total BS, but it keeps getting promoted by people who are like, yes, but did you hear? They can sense when a caterpillar is eating them and change their leaf. Yes, I have heard that. We know that. It has nothing to do with the brain type system. It is a simple reflex response. It has nothing to do with consciousness. I photosynthesize. Therefore, I am. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but I love it. I love that because I, it's been one of my pet peeves for a while, and I'm glad they both – by the way, they also published in Trends in Plant Science where, and basically were like, hey, by the way, you guys fucked up a decade ago by letting these assholes publish. This is all bullshit. I like how like Bobby's like a, like an old angry. I'll be a cool day in hell before I recognize a plant as a consciousness. <laughs> when you go to his table at home, it says no greens allowed. <laughs> well, it's funny because if you read the article, that's the, the one that just came out, they write it the way – an adult would be talking to a child with the attitude of, I can't believe I have to articulate this, but you cannot eat your poo. Like it was <laughs> it was that level of like disdain that came through in the writing. Huh. Can't eat poo. <laughs> Jamie's <laughs> furiously scribbling notes. Well, they're my dinner plans. Article number three. <laughs> A woman has lost a significant amount of her skull around her ear due to regular use of Q tips. Damien thinks this is true. Bill thinks this is false. And this one is science. She was someone who used Q-tips to clean her ears every single night, and eventually, after having trouble hearing out of one ear, she went to a doctor who treated her for an ear infection, but that didn't solve the problem. In fact, eventually, she started pulling the Q-tip out, and it was bloody, and she was like, oh, fuck. She went to get CT scans, and they looked, and they went, oh, my God, like, half your skull is missing right now. 
what ended up happening was she gave herself a horrible bacterial infection that just began to eat away at the skull formation around her ear. They had to do a massive and immediate surgery. When the neurologist saw her, he's like, holy shit, I would have had to see you five years ago to make any real difference in this. Like we, they got her in there, got rid of a lot of the diseased tissue and bone and stuff, put it, had to put in like new ear canals and all this other kind of stuff. And they found a whole bunch of embedded cotton fibers all throughout her ear canal. And this is a reiteration of something that we've said a few times, but isn't well known enough, which is don't use Q-tips in your ears. You're not supposed to. It is the weirdest thing because it says it on the package, but every one of us has grown up doing that. And it's How also- How the fuck else do you clean that shit out of your ears? Well, not just that. What the fuck else are Q-tips for? Like, yeah. this is the only thing. Well, there's I've, an I've answer to the first question. You, yeah. there, there's, a, there's a solution you put in your ear and, and then you have a, outside your ear, you have a little cotton swab that, that absorbs the now liquefied earwax. Oh, okay. And, yeah, what, sure, do you, what do you put in? It's a solution. I forget what- kind of solution, but they sell it specifically or, as earwax removal. as we it's, only discovered a couple months ago, you could just be East Asian and they don't have earwax, which was wow. one of the craziest discoveries we've ever had. Yeah, but That's they strange. drive into birds. You yeah. can't fucking... <laughs> <laughs> But this uh, why, why do Q-tips exist thing that, question is still uh, like... Is it, it would be as if somebody that's said... That's the only reason. What if somebody said, hey, doctors just came out with this thing. Whatever you do, do not wear glasses on your face, like over your eyes. It is horrible. It's going to cause your eyes to explode. Don't do them. And then you're like, but then why are we still making glasses? <laughs> yeah. what are, okay, we accept the findings, but why are there still stores selling <laughs> yeah. glasses? It'd be like one of those things, like when you grow up and you find out, oh, there's like a big drug market that this is used for. Like yeah. if Q-tips are like essential for like cleaning out an opiate pipe or right. something and that's what supported yeah. the entire industry i like, have actually used q-tips to clean things pieces. before <laughs> sure but you have you bought them to clean your ears out and you use them impromptu to do something <laughs> different right like why is this industry it's it's almost like it's like this secret ver you know what q-tips are they're bath salts for your ears, right? Like, nobody yeah. is using yeah. those as their bath what? salts. And it says on it, not for human consumption, but everybody's fucking put it in, in well, there. And so there's also, there's the second level to that because people think that, you know, putting salt in your bath is going to have some kind of medical effect. Uh, it does not. No, I think there's, it's just, I thought it was just for smells or something. That's what it, I it, That's not what it says really? on the package, yeah. It's Epsom salts, isn't that just, like, it's more like a, a, just to clean a wound, like, uh, just... I, I, they, people... Literally to put salt in a wound. No, people, people claim that it has, like, muscle relaxing oh, properties okay. and I stuff think. like that, which is false. I had always just assumed it was, like, the smell that they were... Like, it was like a potpourri. It, it's only proven medical use is as a laxative. Oh. Like, as a... As a kid, you know, you use sweet salt. Which you don't want in the tub, by the way. Right, yeah. <laughs> As a kid, you know, you saw these commercials for, like, Visine and everything. And you, you know, yeah. I never used Visine growing up. I didn't have – you just assumed, like, oh – Itchy red eyes must just be a huge problem. And then now that you're an adult living in California, realize, yeah. that was like the biggest just undercover, like, hey, you smoke pot? You want yeah. to get away with it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have Ben Stein sell you some eye drops. Yo, yeah, why was it Ben Stein? Big square around. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. He's just as Who's a pseudoscientist? Yes, he totally is. He's like literally an anti-evolution creationist. Wow. Who made an entire quote unquote documentary about it. Jewish creationist too. Yeah. Cause I didn't even think like, cause I, we all know the Christian yeah, creationists, yeah. but like, huh? I thought Jews were immune from that level of stupidity. No, and they no, still no. have the Old Testament. All right, on to article number four. At least 22 people in the Midwest had to be hospitalized due to an as-yet-unknown condition caused by vaping that left at least one of them in a medically-induced coma. Damien thinks this is bad science. Bill thinks this is science. And this one is bad science. Damien, you won one. I know, because you offered a bonus question. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I mean, I. You are not taking winning well. You, 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 first of all, no, you. No, no, Bill, Bill's, I'm bowing to Bill right now, the deepest <laughs> Asian bow of respect. <laughs> I will commit seppuku <laughs> if he claims that I've done something it's a different. Bird but killing you, bow. <laughs> you. Yeah. Damien, you are taking this win horribly. The fir your first ever win in I Call BS, and you are not a good winner. I am Russell Crowe. You are Joaquin Phoenix, and I've been living the entire movie of Gladiator. <laughs> we finally get our, our one on one right now. Man, I thought this was going to be much better. I thought he was really going to be cordial about it. I thought yeah. he was going to be like Bill, a good you're a sport. gentleman, scholar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he has to act this way about it, but you know what? I'm glad he doesn't win more often, but I am going to at least say congratulations this time. We are all very proud this of you. Time. We are all very. I have one before, and you have not said congratulations. No, no, no. I'm saying congratulations <laughs> this time in playing the game. Your first time winning. Congratulations. You way to go. I've never had to say congratulations before because you've been disappointment to me and the rest of your family. But <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna. Fine, that's a true statement. But everything else you have said is false. Yeah, yeah, and I again. 
Very proud of you. Despite the way you acted, despite the way you just acted. <laughs> Very proud of you. My pride knows no limits. I think you are growing and you are getting better at this game. And clearly all the time you have put in six plus years playing it has finally paid off. Most people would criticize you for not winning a game in those six years. Not me. Not Bobby. Bobby's going to compliment you for finally winning and say that I think you did a really good job. I'm like a uh, a person of color in the South and Bobby's like a Jim Crow sheriff. And that uh, anything I say to criticize that isn't <laughs> sucking his dick uh-huh. is is me being ungrateful <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and needing to be shot or at least arrested or a dog sucked uh-huh. on. Well, I'm just saying congratulations, and I'm very proud of you. Way to go, Damien, for winning I Call BS for the first time ever. I am very proud of you. I think Bill is too. Bill, are, are you not oh, proud to be here on this monumentous day, the first <laughs> ever win in Damien's history? We uh, should, uh, I don't know, celebrate. Maybe we go out for drinks after this. We'll do something. I would like to record. Could you repeat that? I want to uh-huh. record you saying sure. that so that the next time I win, I okay. sh- and say that it's my first time yes. winning. Yes. So this is officially the first time you have won. Well, I don't have the camera ready. I don't have the camera ready. You got it. I got the, this first time you've ever won, but I'm very proud of you. Uh, I think this is a huge milestone in your education, development, career, uh, position on the show, everything. I'm just, I'm I'm overwhelmed with joy and pride in you, and that's a very good job. My career is sidekick on this. Yes, absolutely. On, on You're this. an advocate <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Yes. I've... Yes. Uh, all right. Well, congratulations. This is history in the making, everybody. The first ever win of I Call BS to Damien. So, uh, vaping. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like I may have made a mistake again two weeks in a row. It actually turns out this was science, meaning Bill has won. I call BS. Oh, you suck, Damien. Jesus Christ. All of that braggadociousness. Here we thought you had a winner. I was being super nice to you. And yet, you are a fucking loser again. Again. You won't stop losing. It's weird how your tires keep getting slashed. It's just- <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. I think I'm going to insert Dr. Troy's comments from last week. <laughs> so the the reason that Tro- Troy must have been, like, so peeved is he yeah. knew all the answers. So no, he, he didn't. It was the first time he hadn't. He had, like, a 80-hour lab week that week. It was oh, the okay. only time he hadn't read every single article. Wow. And so it was the only time it, it would have actually pulled off. But indeed, this is science. <laughs> We've talked before about popcorn lung, as we brought up earlier. This is not that, though that is something you should con- be concerned and worried about. But this is something very different. These are 22 people, at least 22 people, who got hospitalized across the Midwest for a very mysterious illness in which essentially some of them almost stopped breathing completely. One of them had to be put, his oxygen levels were at 10%. So he had to be put into a medically conduced coma so he didn't die and intubated. Mm. And a lot of these people do have to be intubated to basically keep it up. Like, Damien, you have some trouble breathing sometimes. What's, What's bad percentage breath? Like, what is, I should go to the doctor's percentage. Anytime your pulse ox yeah. is, uh, I guess, below 90%, yeah. that's not normal. If it's 80%, I mean, 90% fine, whatever. Yeah. That's not, you could be diabetic. You right. could just be a fat dude, whatever. Yeah. 80%, 70%. I mean, that's, ideally you want that shit around 99%. So when you hit 10%, like you're at a, you're at a you're bad gonna, you're spot. You're going to die. You, yeah. you don't have enough oxygen to feed your brain. Yeah. You're, wow. You're, so is, it, is that like danger of brain damage level? You, you, yeah. I mean, I assume that's why they had to yeah. put him in a coma because you, okay. yeah. you have to reduce the horsepower because this engine's going to die. Yeah. Off. Well, imagine this is this guy ba- basically doesn't remember anything. He like he just remember feeling woozy. They took him to the hospital. They, you know, 10 percent oxygen. He's unconscious. Mm-hmm. They intubate him. They put him in medically induced coma. He wakes up weeks later and he's like, what the fuck happened? I was hanging out at my house. Like what went on? And so Where's my vape. I want to blow some cotton. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't figure out what was going on because these were people different genders different age groups different Mm -hmm. locations urban rural whole nine yards but they were all juggalos (laughs) (laughs) problem solved (laughs) but they all had a common history of vaping and the guy who was using THC vape said he had gotten it from a friend and that the color was off like it wasn't the amber color it was supposed to be and so was like the viscosity of it so he thinks that maybe it wasn't filled with the actual material it was more viscous or less viscous I think he said more viscous Okay. Anecdotally, and, and if this could help any of our listeners, I try to get away from smoking flowers. Yeah. Uh, you know, roses, chrysanthemums, things yes. like that. A couple of years back, and I, I, I got a, 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 TH, vape, a yeah. THC vape pen. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I used it pretty regularly. And, and I, I grew and I grew up with asthma problems. Yeah. And it was ever since then that my breathing problems oh, happened. Wow. Like, because when I, I had it, 
I mean, anecdotally, it would burn, but like in a different way than even taking the fattest, dopest rip yeah. off the sweetest bee. Huh. Well, and this is what we're finding. So here's here's the problem that I think happened is that we use one word. We call it vaporizing. And that's a little bit confusing because as I've brought up on this show before, when we do cannabis and THC studies uh, in the United States, if we're not using it as edibles, which you can't do all the time because that's your body actually processes it different. Your liver creates different enzymes when you're, when you're eating it. So it's actually a different effect. So when we want to study the effects of imbibing through smoking and inhalation, that kind of things, we use vaporizers, right? Because medically, that's the safest way to do it. It's the least damage to your lungs, least likely to cause cancer, least things that you're bringing into your body. You, bringing, breathing in smoke of any type is just not good for you. Even minor damage, is it does vaporizing cause any damage? Seemingly, if you do it correctly, it causes little to none or none observable. Maybe there's some that we don't know about, right? But this is what we do in medical studies. We use vaporizers. P personally, when I use cannabis, I use a vaporizer, right? But, but the, this is, but so in what form is the cannabis when you vaporize it? It is a reg, it is in, in a standard, what they call flower form or nug form. It is a regular piece of cannabis, right? And what you're doing is putting it near a hot item, a heating element, yeah. and you're running air over it. And because the THC crystals will come off into the air at a temperature that's high, but below the combustion rate, if you do it correctly, you're breathing in warm air with THC in it. Come by our place. We'll show you, Bill. Okay. So, so that's how a vaporizer would work that you would use in a medical study. And so when you read medical studies, they talk about vaporizers, and they'll even put a little thing in there. This is the safest way to do this. This right. is really safe. But and that's should... nothing like what a vaporizer nothing is. Nothing like – no, that is a vaporizer. It's no, nothing I mean like, the, the commercial ones. It's nothing – well, you could buy this commercial too. It's just nothing like what this – what we call like a pen vaporizer would be. Right. It's that's nothing like about. these liquid things, which are usually a glycerin base. The liquid inside yeah. is a glycerin base. Uh -huh. And this is a heating element within the pen. There's a few issues with this. One is the way you do it before with those uh, vaporizers that use the actual material themselves and just the hot air coming across it is the material never comes in contact with the heating element. There's air in between the material and heating element. So all you're ever getting is hot air. That's a big difference between this in which the heating well, and element- it's not combusting. Yes. Right? And yeah. this-, this case in these pen vaporizers, the heating element touches the actual glycerin and heats it up that way. So you do get some burning effect. Second is you're literally combusting glycerin, which is bad for you. And we're finding more and more that it can be actually probably really bad for you in what is essentially a huge N number mass sample that is not FDA approved and is likely causing a lot of damage. And so we call these both things vaporizers, but they're not one of these is a vaporizer, the type we use for medical studies. So you could buy it for cannabis at home. And one of these is a heating element that heats up a liquid that you carry around in your pocket. It is yeah. not a vaporizer. There but, are flower vaporizers out there for anybody listening and yes. curious about the product. They're much safer. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And they do even have portable ones. By the way, I have my issues with those. Those aren't always so great because they use a different methodology. They can sometimes burn the materials as well, whereas a proper vaporizer... They use coal to yeah. the heating source. But so can glycerin actually burn? Combust. I mean, like, well, so you're... Like, well, clearly water can't burn, sure. right? Like it sure. just, it actually vaporizes. Yeah. It becomes vapor. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's why they call it that. But right. it is not, so... It's it, not all water. It's some yeah. mixture of propylene glycol, glycerin, yes. water. Yeah, and and so when you're putting those through a combustion cycle, you are essentially creating a bunch of probably bad shit for your body. And I did not know that glycerin was combustible. I mean, I, I don't, don't have to look this I don't up. know what, yeah, I don't know what yeah. the actual chemistry that's going on there is, but what it's not happening is it's not just passing through as the warm air right. that is coming over yeah. something that is an actual vaporizer. Uh -huh. Now, I've never worked in the field, but just talking to a lot of friends I have who, yeah. either, who have, um, the, the early models, they use supposedly cut the oil with butane. Yes, and they, they found they found something that was, else. To... That was really bad. Those those oh, old butane wow. ones were That's really definitely bad for you. combustible. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, those were really bad for you. But there, there there is some issues here. And here's what I would say to everybody. This isn't the case of something that's gone through a ton of FDA trials and testing and then has been decided to be safe and they've released it to the public, like most of the things you can buy in a store. This is something where basically companies have been able to put this out and make you the guinea pigs. There are better ways. Hey, I'm not, I'm not bashing you for wanting to go take a few hits of THC. I do it too. But there are safe ways to do it. And better that you smoke a joint than use these pen vaporizers. But quite frankly, if you really want to be safe and you're really concerned about this, go out and buy yourself a regular old vaporizer. You can get the kind that go in your house. They're I think they're like 40 bucks. The cannabis that you're buying is usually way cheaper. You can pick what kind you want. It's better quality. The whole nine yards. 
And what you're not doing is being the guinea pigs for the Jewel Corporation who want to put this stuff out and have you try it and say, oh, it's safer than cigarettes. We don't know that yet. Popcorn lung is worse than lung cancer. This thing getting into a medically induced coma is probably worse than anything that's ever happened to somebody who's taken two drags off a cigarette. So there are these elements to our society that are not nearly as safe. Now, most of the time when the panic, moral panic comes out about stuff like this, it's bullshit because they're like, look at this drug. Look at this thing. It is a problem because these people have gotten hurt and you have to look back and be like, listen, you have to understand they did testing for eight and a half years. They had huge end number samples. If something is happening, it's a fluke or something wrong. That is not the case with this type of stuff. These kind of cartridge vaporizers have not gone through that testing and, and using them is essentially deciding that you're going to be the guinea pig. And by the way, they also kind of suck. Like Damien said, I tried them too. They make your throat hurt. They're just like not good quality. Nothing about it is good. The selection isn't good. Just like, just fucking leave those things alone. <laughs> go go smoke a joint. <laughs> smoke out of a bong like your grandfather did, you pussy. Yeah. Or uh, dr- drink water. Yeah, either one. Eat vegetables. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, you can do all of those things at the same <laughs> well, time. Like, yeah, You'll eat the... more vegetables after you get a little hot. <laughs> yeah, when you got the munchies, yeah, have at it, man. Like, right. rock on. Like, drink a lot of water. That'll, yeah, that yeah, fact... Yeah. You won't have a choice about that. You'll just want it. All right. Thank you, audience, for coming back for Science Faction 354, where you learned about how 11,000 birds fell dead out of a Montana sky due to a hailstorm, why plants do not have animal-like consciousness, how a woman lost a significant amount of her skull bone mass because of her use of Q-tips, and why at least 22 people in the Midwest have been hospitalized due to vaping. Thank you so much for joining us, and come on back next week for Science Faction. 355. I can't vape anymore? So what am I going to do to make myself look cool? I already got truck nuts. You've been listening to Science Fiction. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs>